Hello! If you want OBS as your input background for VTube Studio, stick around and I will show you how. You might already be aware, but recently VTube Studio had a huge update and added special effects and something called Spout Background. With it, you can use OBS scenes or sources as background input. So yeah, that means you can have live gameplay built into your VTube Studio. Pretty cool. You might be thinking, so what's the difference between having Spout and OBS versus just using a transparent VTuber over an OBS scene? And that is a valid question. OBS and Spout combo is particularly useful when you want your OBS scene and visual effects to be incorporated with each other fully. For example, you might want your game input to be your background and influence your model's lighting. Or you could just use background specific effects that would be more complicated to set up with an OBS. So if any of that sounds cool to you, let's go ahead and start setting it up. Right over here is going to be our magnificent requirements list. You're going to need VTube Studio version 1.28.0 minimum. Obviously that's where all of the special effects come in and that's where Spout Background comes in. You'll also need OBS, which is pretty much a given. And lastly, you will need the Spout to plug in for OBS. Technically, you will also need a pretty decent computer in order for all of this to work, but hopefully your computer will be able to tolerate most of this. If you don't have Spout 2 as a plugin, you will need to pause right here and go ahead and install it. In essence, you'll need to install the plugin for OBS and then toggle it on within VTube Studio. If you need more details than that, I've got a short video on the installation process, so I will link that down below and probably up there too. Once you've got Spout 2 installed, we can go ahead and start working with an OBS. Now that we're in OBS, we're going to go ahead and add our background. For the purpose of the tutorial, I have a scene and I'm going to add a couple of media files to it. So I'm going to right click and add, and I'm going to add in a media source. This is going to be my just chatting background. Backgrounding. <laughs> I'm going to set this to my local file and make sure that if you have a looping background that you check this box that says loop. Then we can go ahead and hit OK. And now I have my looping background ready to go. Now if you want, you can also go ahead and add anything else in here that you might use like a display capture or a game capture if you're going to have a game open. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to have a game actually open. So I just have a video of Genshin that I clipped that can be playing in the background that we can use for that purpose. We are going to go ahead and add a spout filter to both of these. So to do that, we're going to click on the source and then we can click on this filters button and it will open up the filters menu. Down under effect filters, we will right click add. And now with the spout plugin, you should have access to spout filter. You can go ahead and add a spout filter in, hit OK, and then we can rename it here. So I'm going to name this one. This is our spout filter for our gameplay, Genshin Gameplay. And then we're going to hit change spout filter name, and we can hit close now. And I'm also going to click on this source, go to its filters, and do the same thing. Okay, so now both of these have spout filters on them. Let's go ahead and look at VTube Studio. Within VTube Studio, we can now double click and we can go to our background section. It's this green button right here. And if we click on that, we can scroll down the list until we see this one that is labeled as special right here. It is the spout to input background. So we can double click that and it will go ahead and pull up a list of our options. Now I have more than what you'll have in this tutorial, but we have the ones that we just previously labeled using the spout filter, which are the Genshin gameplay and the just chatting background. So let's go ahead and try out the just chatting background. As you can see, it's updated the background to be the live background that I actually have playing within my OBS as well. Similarly, if we go ahead and click over to the Genshin gameplay, it's on pause right now, so let me unpause it. We can now see the Genshin gameplay that is actually active within the VTube Studio menu, which is kind of absurd, but it does allow you to have some pretty cool effects. So the only other thing that we have to do to get this fully and completely set up is we will actually have to add either a new scene with your VTuber model or just add a new Spout 2 capture here. So to do that, we're going to right click, hit add, and then we will go down to Spout 2 Capture, and I'm gonna name this VTuber with background. 
and we can set this to whichever one is the proper one. So this is everything together. So we've got our gameplay and our model. As you can see, I'm lagging out a little bit. I think that's because I have multiple instances of OBS and VTube Studio and Spout 2 open at the same time. Uh, you might not have this issue if you're using a much more powerful PC than I am and slash or if you don't have literally every single thing open on your PC like I do. <laughs> but that is how you get it all set up. The next step is to go ahead and add in all of your special effects. So let's go ahead and put this Genshin video on pause temporarily so it's not too overwhelming in the background while we work. Go ahead and double click and we can click right here on the cog menu. And what you'll wanna do, I'm already here, but you'll want to scroll down from the top and we're going to scroll all the way to this visual effects slash VFX section. And to turn on special effects, you will just toggle this activate button on right here. Currently there's no selected effects, so let's go ahead and click on this and we can go ahead and start adding them. Now, depending on your GPU, you might only be able to add a couple of these before you start experiencing performance issues, but these are all of the ones that you have access to. There's dozens of them. So one of my favorite effects to add is the backlight effect. This is actually possible to do with an OBS itself. I actually have a tutorial on this on my channel if you wanna try and do it without VTube Studio, but you can blend this in with your spout background and it'll look like the gameplay is actually affecting the light blending. To turn it on, we're going to slide this top slider up and it will already start taking effect. What we can do is we can scroll down to the bottom here. It has this option to choose a custom backlight color tint, but we're actually going to use this setting backlight color from background and turn it on all the way up. And it will actually pull the color from the background instead of pulling it from a specific tint. Scroll back up and we can adjust the blur background overlay. There's an overlay that will cover your model that comes from the source itself. So we can make this as intense or light as we want. I'm just going to leave it somewhere like 0.37, for example. And then there's all of these other settings that we can adjust here, the brightness and direction. That's probably about where I will keep it. So now if I go ahead and I start the video up again, you can see that the colors are actually affecting my model as well. And within OBS, of course, both the gameplay and my model are being captured simultaneously. So if you're the type of person that changes scenes a lot within OBS and doesn't usually have just one simple background at a time, which is probably most streamers, you might be thinking, hey, how do I swap between sources all the time? And to do that, you would just put the spout filter on your actual scene itself instead of on the individual sources. Now, this is one of our samples from before. We can just go ahead and right click this and we're going to copy the spout filter from it and we can go to our scene which it's located in and hit paste filters then we can go ahead and right click and go down to our filters for our scene and we should see this copied spout filter available now but we're going to rename this to scene and hit update the name and then we can go ahead and hit close when we go into vtube studio we can go ahead and double click and we're going to change our spout to input background and now we have this new one available titled scene. We can click on that. And now as is in our OBS, we can see our just chatting background. Now, if we updated the just chatting background and swapped it out for the, for the Genshin video, it would also update that within VTube Studio. And this is the case for anything. If you added an image or a new part of an overlay, it would immediately update it here as well. And it would update all of the effects that are being calculated based on this background input as well. So the downside to all of this, of course, is that the more effects and spout filters that you add, the more PC power you will be consuming. So just be mindful of your specs and make sure that your PC can handle what you're doing. Going bit by bit is the best way to monitor your PC's performance so that you don't cause any crashing problems. I know that this is a really niche feature to have added, but I think it's really cool. And if you have the PC power to be able to use your Spout 2 input from OBS, it's got some really cool benefits, especially adding special effects that are incorporated with your gameplay background. I wish I could do it personally, but my PC cannot handle it. So <laughs> happy backgrounding. Enjoy your day, morning, evening, and make sure to sub to this channel and my other channel and follow me on Twitch. Bye. <laughs>